Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you so so much for tuning in with me today. So in today's video I'm gonna be reviewing a bunch of new makeup releases. I definitely did accumulate a full face of brand newly released makeup products and I've got to say products were just dropping left and right and I really had a hard time to decide what I wanted to try out and what I wanted to pass on, but I think I made some really good decisions this time around. Well, maybe one that wasn't that great, but we're gonna get to that. But in general, I feel like the products that I picked up were very, very good. So I got some products by Summer Fridays, RMS, Huda Beauty, um, Too Faced, which I've never featured before, Refai Beauty, Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I also do have this viral foundation in today's video. I mean, there's an abundance of products, okay? Because there were so many like interesting releases. So please do drop me a comment down below if you have picked up any of these products that I'm featuring in today's video, or if you have picked up something else that I should know about. I would absolutely love hearing from you. And if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, to my channel and also ring the bell in order to get notified about my upcoming videos and please don't forget to check out my description box down below i am going to be making an effort to link all of the products and as per usual i'm also going to be including all of my discount codes in that description box down below so if you're shopping through my links thank you so so much that's going to support the channel and i definitely do appreciate it so yeah without no further ado let's just go bare face and let's talk about the very first product all right, you guys, I am not quite barefaced because I've already went ahead and I actually did apply a prepping product and a primer. Uh, as a prepping step, I did use my Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Water Powder Serum. I honestly love this and you have seen this over and over again on my channel since I purchased this. And then I also did use my beloved Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer, so I did apply both of these products already just due to the fact that I do want to save some time because you know we have a lot of products to go through however I still want to put something on my lips just to hydrate them and I did pick up a brand new release and I really wanted to show you this product because I'm obsessed so this is by Summer Fridays it's the lip butter balm in iced coffee and this retails for $24 now if you have watched my best of beauty you do know that I adore the Summer Fridays lip butter balm they are so amazing and when I realized that they would come out with a flavor that is iced coffee I had to get it I had to I had to out of all of these lip treatment products that are on the market this is one of my favorite formulas um, I mean this is my vanilla one and it's almost empty and this has 15 grams of product, so the triple amount of what you would usually get with your standard sort of lip balm products. And this is just a formula that I love. I just adore to apply this one, especially the clear one in vanilla, uh, for overnight. This one is oil-free. Now, Summer Fridays also has a lip oil, but honestly, I feel like it does not really compare to this formula. Go with this instead of the lip oils. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. I've got this in vanilla, as I said, this is the clear one that I use for overnight, so it's just clear. And I also have the brown sugar one. Oh my gosh, this is like my favorite flavor, I would say, ever. I'm gonna show you a little bit how this color is looking like. And when you blend this out, it's just, oh my goodness. It's a little bit sheerer with the pigmentation. Oh. I could sit here and sniff my hand for like ages, but I'm gonna wipe it off and get to what I want to apply today. I mean, when I saw that they released an iced coffee flavor, I jumped on this, okay? I did because I love these sort of like cozy, warm sort of scents. Like, I mean, I have the vanilla one, I have the brown sugar one and the iced coffee one. That's kind of like my scent profile when it comes to a lip product. I also do love like something fruity, something juicy. It really depends on what it is. It is so nice, so if you like coffee, this is just such a mild, sort of creamy coffee flavor. It's really nice, so I'm going to apply this. And yeah, I do have a little bit of, I don't know, a scratch here. I must have scratched myself overnight, so that is looking a little bit rough. I do apologize about that. Enough of the talking, I'm just gonna be applying this. This is so nourishing, and although this shade is a little bit sheerer, 
I mean, just the fact that I have iced coffee on my lips right now, it just makes me so, so happy. I do adore these Summer Fridays lip butter balms. They are fantastic. Some of the best out there on the market, if you have not tried them. They've got, I think, eight flavors in total. Go for it. They are worth everything and you get so much product. But all right, I'm going to stop raving now because uh, I could go on and on and on about how amazing these are. But let's move on to the foundation. You might have seen it on the thumbnail. I did pick up this very viral foundation out of Korea. Like, I saw this foundation everywhere on my social media. It really was hard to avoid this foundation. And I thought to myself, you know what? I kind of want to try it. I kind of want to see if the hype is real. So this is by the Korean brand Tear Tear and it's the Mask Fit Red Cushion Foundation and this retails for approximately $30. Now I got mine off of YesStyle and YesStyle sometimes is running some sales, especially on this product. And I do have a rewards code with YesStyle. It's always in my description box down below. So I actually did pay a little bit less because I did pick this one up during a summer sale. Um, yeah, I really wanted to see if the hype on this product was real. This is a cushion foundation. This is the packaging. So this is the inside of the packaging. Here you've got the sponge. And when you open this one up, here is the cushion. So I'm going to just let you know what they are claiming about this foundation. So I am going to go off on what the claims are on Yes Style. So they are saying that this is a smudge proof cushion foundation that offers powerful coverage to blur skin, imperfections and redness for a silky smooth and radiant finish. And on some other websites, I did read that this has a semi matte finish. So this also offers a perfect complexion that lasts 72 hours. I mean, don't wear your makeup for 72 hours. Always wash your makeup off at the end of the day. I don't know anyone who would want their makeup on their skin for 72 hours. So they do have some interesting ingredients in this. So this um, product is actually not oil-free though. Now there is one oil, but it's like an algae derived oil. So I'm not even mad at it because it's actually a really good quality oil. Now the other thing is that this foundation also comes with an SPF of 40. But for some whatever reason, I did not really find much information on what filters they are using, you know. And I do assume it's a mineral filter because the very first ingredient in this is water followed by titanium dioxide. But the titanium dioxide on the ingredient list also is listed as a pigment. So I'm not really sure. I do assume that the titanium dioxide in this is going to be you know, your mineral filter. Yeah, so don't take my word on this because I did research this and I really could not find much information on the SPF claim. So I would suggest just use a separate SPF underneath your makeup as a last step of your skincare routine, you know, just to be safe. Better safe than sorry. Now this does contain a fragrance listed as perfume. So it does have a little bit of a scent when it goes on. However, the scent does not linger around. I feel like it kind of smells a little bit more intense in the packaging, but when it goes onto your skin for the very first minute, my nose can pick it up, but afterwards I can't smell it anymore. And the other thing is that this is a drying alcohol free foundation. So there are no drying alcohols in this formula. This actually does come in 30 different shades, which leads me to the shade range. Usually Asian brands are not known to have an inclusive shade range. It is what it is. And that's also the reason why, you know, I tend to prefer their skincare products. I mean, I'm a huge fan of K-Beauty. If you watch any of my skincare related videos, you know I'm obsessed with K-Beauty. So I did go with the shade 21c cool ivory which is i think this might be a light with a cool undertone shade but it's not like one of the fairest shades i thought you know i i better use a little bit of a deeper shade because i know that korean brands and asian brands in general they tend to lean very very light very very fair and so I thought, let's just use 21C. So one thing that you have to know about this foundation is the fact that the shade is going to oxidize. And it's going to oxidize by quite a lot, but 
in this case, it's going to come to my advantage because it actually oxidizes and it matches me almost perfect. When it goes on, I'm going to look crazy pale. So before I'm going to apply this, I just wanted to let you know, I did watch so many videos on how to apply cushion foundations. And when I tried this out the very first time, I thought this would have so much coverage. Usually people in the video say, go in and just touch it very lightly. Well, I can't do that. I do need a little bit more product with this because I don't think that this is a full coverage foundation. I'm going to be honest with you. Unless you are using quite a lot of product straight off the bat, um, if you are going in sparingly, I feel like it's a medium coverage. I don't love to apply this with the sponge that it came with. I really don't like the sponge. It takes me ages and it just looks a little bit more makeup-y when I apply it with this, which was quite a surprise to me, to be honest, as if I would like apply it with this, but then blend it out with a brush. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So I would say, let's just apply it. I'm going to start at the outer perimeters of my face and then slowly work myself in. I will say this is a finicky product and it's just a little bit time consuming. That's why I also prefer to just take a brush and blend it out with a brush. Like I do tapping motions. I don't like to do swiping motions with this product. Um, so I'm going to press this in a little bit though. Like whenever I don't press a lot, I feel like I don't get much product and the coverage is just not as good. So I'm gonna do this side first, so I'm just going to press this down and then quickly use my brush because don't wait, because this is drying down so quickly, like it's drying down fast and I don't necessarily love that. So I'm going to be doing tapping motions, tapping motions, tapping motions, and I have to work in, in sections here because otherwise it's not gonna work. So I took a little bit more product now because otherwise we're gonna be sitting here until tomorrow and I feel like it's not gonna cover this spot at all. Like yesterday I used this foundation too and I felt like it is not really covering like damaged skin necessary it's it's not i'm gonna apply a generous amount here but just look at how much this is oxidizing in no time all right so let's do the nose the nose is the part that i don't love like i don't love applying this foundation on my nose it just does not want to give me any coverage on my nose and i did do tapping i did do swiping usually i swipe my nose but it's just does not want to stick on my nose. I feel like it is looking very strange. All right, so this is with one layer on one side of my face. I will say it has balanced up my skin tone, but I don't think this is full coverage, you guys. Like my nose, it's not doing anything in terms of coverage. Like it's the one spot where it just does not look very flattering. And for some weird, strange reason, it just looks so makeup-y on my forehead. And usually on my forehead, that's the one spot where most foundations do look the smoothest. But this one, not really. What I don't like about this foundation straight off the bat is the fact that it dries down so quickly and it's pulling my skin. Like this is tugging my skin. Like I can feel this on my face and I don't love that. I really don't. Just stay away from this foundation if you have drier skin, if you have texture, if you have dry patches, or if you have deep set pores. Like I feel like it's enhancing them. Like it's just enhancing texture that I did not even know I had did not do a great job around my scratch right here. So I'm going to do the other side. I mean, on my nose, this product just does not want to stay at all. I apply a little bit more on there and just tap it in with this cushion. So as you can tell, I'm not 100% a fan of this product just due to the fact that it's just drying down way too quickly. And that it's also just 
enhancing a little bit the texture. I do enjoy the finish though. I feel like the finish is really pretty. It's not dewy. It's not over the top glowy. It's just gonna give you a little bit of like a natural glow. But I will say I don't love this foundation on my skin. At least on my skin. I don't I don't get the hype. I really don't understand it. When I look up close, I almost feel like it looks so heavy. It looks very makeup-y. It's almost as if my nose would eat up this product. It's already starting to fade on the tip of my nose again. So do I need to apply another like layer? This is getting ridiculous. Whenever I use this foundation, I feel like I spend so much time on trying to make this work that I don't think it's necessarily worth it because I've got so many other foundations that do blend out amazingly that don't give me so much of a headache. This foundation, unfortunately, I don't think it's ever gonna be a favorite. It's not the worst foundation that I've ever tried, but there are certain things about it that I don't love. I'm not completely mad at it, but I'm also not like happy about it. And I don't really understand the hype that much. That was the foundation. So let's actually move on to a concealer. And this is also a newer product. So this is by Refai Beauty and this is their serum concealer and this retails for $29. I've never tried out Refai before. This was the very first time that I've picked something up by the brand. They really got me with this concealer and I really wanted to try it out. So on the website they are saying that this is offering a buildable light medium coverage. This is a hydrating formula. It blends seamlessly and instantly brightens the skin. This is also available in 24 shades. I picked this one up in the shade 07, which is described as a light to medium with cool undertones. I've been enjoying this so much. Now, every concealer on me honestly is creasing uh, because I do have two fine lines running underneath my eyes. But I will say it always depends on how much a concealer is creasing. It's always going to crease to a certain degree, but this one this one does not crease that much. And I feel like whenever I'm applying this, my under eyes, they just look so hydrated, so smooth, very much perfected. And the way I like to do this is, also I love the stove foot. Um, I like to apply a decent amount. I also feel like they were saying it's a light to medium coverage. Well, on me for some reason, this is pretty medium. Like probably because I'm also using a little bit more product, but I think this is the perfect amount, at least for myself. And the texture here is so, so, so thin. It's a very thin kind of like creamy concealer that I feel like this almost has like a blurring effect and it looks just amazing. I'm gonna let this sit for around a minute and then, you know, I'm gonna just blend it out with a brush I also have used a sponge in the past, but I've not really washed many of my sponges right now. So I feel like I am just gonna go in with a concealer brush because it's also working with a brush. So this has been sitting on my skin for a minute or so. Like I don't want this to sit around for too long though. So I'm just gonna blend it out with this Lawless Concealer Brush. I mean, this blends out pretty much like a dream. I really, really, adore this formula. It's just so beautiful. So I love the shade. I adore this formula. It is so amazing. It's hydrating, it's smoothing, it's blurring. My under eyes look very fresh whenever I'm using this. And I've not really tried this out to spot conceal. I also don't feel like this is necessarily meant to spot conceal. I really feel like this concealer was meant to be used around your eye area. I'm just gonna put an eye primer on top of my eyelids. I'm of course going to be using my Sigma eyeshadow base primer. And then I'll be back uh, with the next product. All right, so my eye primer is applied. So usually I would continue with powdering down my face. However, I do want to use a product right before I'm using the powder. And that's just due to the fact that I feel like this is performing a little bit better underneath powder than on top of powder, but you can also use it on top of powder. I just prefer it underneath powder. And this one is by Too Faced and it's the Chocolate Soleil Melting, Bronzing and Sculpting Stick and this retails for $35. I never really had anything by them and uh, I was so drawn to this 
product. I don't know what it was, but with this release, they really got me. This is also a newer product. So I did pick this up in the shade Chocolate Mousse, which is the lightest shade. Now they have this in four shades, I think. Yeah, four shades. So I really do like this. This is such a beautiful, beautiful cream bronzer. And I've been using this quite a lot. Like ever since I got this, I cannot put this one down anymore. This has such a creamy, melty sort of texture, but it's still like, it's not greasy. It is kind of almost like moussey. It's so nice. This one also has a perfume in here. And you know what this smells like? It smells like Jaffa Cakes. Do you guys know Jaffa Cakes? This is Jaffa Cakes to me, like 100%. The way I like to use this is, I actually use this on my Real Techniques 200 brush. This is a brush that I just do adore for cream bronzing application. And I just take it on the brush like that. And it's so creamy and melty. And then I like to just tap it off onto my hand, see? And I just work it into the brush a little bit more. And I'm gonna just quickly remove these and then I just go in. And I just love how this is melting into the skin. I like to build this one up a little bit more slowly. This is such a beautiful bronzing shade. It's not 100% a sculpting shade on me. This is really a bronzing shade. And I also feel like this foundation might require a little bit of bronzing right now. I just feel like this is, just look at this shade. I'm gonna show you a little bit. Let's just look at that shade. And it's just gonna look like the most native bronze on me, on my skin. And I just love this formula. It blends out so, so nicely. So usually I take it onto my forehead and onto my cheeks. I don't really like to put any cream product on my nose. I mean, my nose is uh, already compromised today due to this foundation making it just look a little bit strange. So I'm not gonna do that on my nose, but I'm definitely gonna do it on my cheeks and on my forehead. But just look at that. That is such an amazing shade. That is such an amazing formula for cream bronzer. I am so impressed by this. So before I'm gonna move on to the powder, cause I feel like I really like want to urgently powder down my face. Uh, I'm gonna be doing my eyebrows. I think I'm gonna be using something else today. I think I'm just gonna be using my Victoria Beckham baby blade in what shade is this? Uh, light brown. I'm gonna use that one. And of course I'm gonna, as per usual, <laughs> I'm gonna be using my Kosas Airbrow in the shade soft brown and I'm, I'll be right back with the powders. All right, so my eyebrows are filled in, but I also did reapply my clips just because we are gonna be moving on to the setting powders now because I actually do have two. I've got one for underneath my eyes and the other one for the rest of my face, just due to the fact that I feel like one is performing a little bit better underneath my eyes than the other one. So let's maybe start off with the one for underneath my eyes. So this one is by Huda Beauty and it's the Easy Bake Fragrance Free Loose Baking and Setting Powder and this retails for $32. I mean, this powder has been on the market for years, but it always did contain this very strong perfume. And I actually had that powder and the only thing I did not like about it was the scent. So I did pick this one up in the shade Cherry Blossom, which is the pinky shade. Now they've got this in seven different shades. If you're not vibing with a pink powder, you guys may know I love a good pink powder. I'm just not the biggest fan of this packaging. Usually this comes also with this lid like that. And sometimes this one is a little bit harder to remove, but it's kind of nice if you're traveling. But in general, I don't really like the ones with this mashing nut, but it's okay. It's just such a minor thing. So I'm gonna apply this just underneath my eyes. And this is, ah, I love it. It's also not over the top pink. It's not like the one size beauty one. That one really has a tint to it. I feel like this one is just a little bit more of a brightening pink powder. And honestly, I cannot wait to actually set the rest of my face because although this foundation does dry down, it still feels a little bit tacky when you touch it. All right, so that's it for underneath my eyes. I feel like this powder is just doing such a great job for underneath the eyes. I 
really love it. So let's move on to the next powder. And this is a brand new release by a brand that I truly adore. So this is by RMS Beauty and this is the Hydra setting powder and this retails for $42. Now this powder comes with 10 grams and it's 42. The Huda Beauty has 20 grams. So this has double the amount of the RMS and it's also a little bit less. I was so intrigued. You guys know I love RMS. I have so many favorite products by RMS and I really wanted to give this one a go. So this one also does come in three different shades. I've got this in the shade light. So that's the lightest shade that you can get. And on the website, they are saying it's a long wearing talk free skincare infused loose setting powder available in three sheer soft focus shades this weightless oil absorbing powder minimizes the appearance of pores blurs imperfections sets makeup and delicately hydrates for a natural smooth filter effect on the skin it's kind of funny that they're saying that this is oil absorbing right but this powder in and of itself does contain some oils and i thought oh no i don't love that but it did not really cause an issue. I will say this powder was very effective in, you know, keeping my makeup from getting oily throughout the day. It did a fantastic job. I don't love this for underneath my eyes. I have tried this out with the Refi concealer and my concealer did not agree with this powder whatsoever. On my Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer, this one did work a little bit better, but that's why I thought, you know, I want to use a different setting powder underneath my eyes. Uh, I don't know why that is, because on the rest of my face, it is actually looking really, really lovely. So I like the packaging a lot more than the old version here. So this comes with a puff. I don't like these round sort of puffs, you know, I like when they are a little bit more angled and shaped. Um, and it comes with a lid, a locking lid, which I definitely do appreciate, right? And you can open it up and instead of having the traditional sort of holes poked through it, this has Armas written right here and that's where the powder is going to come out. <laughs> that's kind of like innovative, if I may say. I mean, I really was like, wait, what? That's kind of funny. So another thing is they also have it on the lid. RMS so that it kind of stops from coming out, which is even cooler. But I have been really enjoying this powder. It is very blurring on the skin. And as I said, it does keep my oil production at bay throughout the day. So I'm going to put it on one side of my face first so that you can see the difference. Um, I really have been enjoying it. I've got to say, I really like it. It is a very nice powder. It blurs a lot a lot and i love that and a powder and it definitely does mattify my foundations and i've also tried this on some other foundations i definitely do want to show you this product on top of the rms uh, foundation i feel like i should be doing another rms video very very soon but yeah just look at that i mean i'm using my own powder puff now right i'm not using this rms one just Due to the fact that I love the shape of the Alex Cosmetics one a little bit better now. I got it on my ear. Oh my gosh. So let's put it on my forehead too. Can you see the difference? This is without the powder. This is with the powder. I mean, this is a beautiful powder. I really like it. I just did not love it for underneath my eyes. On the rest of my face, it looks so beautiful and what i also love about this powder is the fact that it's just not deceiving meaning that when i apply it it's gonna stay like this it's not gonna let my oils poking through throughout the day it's just gonna keep me mad and i rarely have to reapply powder when i'm using this powder so it is quite a strong powder but it's not gonna look cakey unless you put it on top of concealer or underneath your eyes all right but my makeup is all set so although i did use the cream bronzer which still shows up i kind of still want to use a powder bronzer so that's the next thing that we are gonna be moving on to and uh, this is not necessarily like a brand new release but it's still pretty new and it's the newest bronzer that i have in my collection and this is by nyx and it's the butter melt bronzer and this retails for ten dollars whoever did the design on their uh, online pictures did such a mistake uh, because the shades looked very pink 
like very pink in undertone and that was so misleading because I do love a good bronzer with a pink with a cool toned undertone I love that because it just works so so well for me but when they were released uh, everyone was like well this does not look like anything like the pictures and I was so confused I really wanted to try out the shades for myself and I came to realize that the description on their website is also completely off now I did pick this up in three shades because I was not sure which shade I wanted and I knew that those would just sell out immediately and they did in the beginning now they're back in stock so basically my favorite shade out of these three is the shade that is described as a warm tone however I'm telling you it's not a warm tone the other shades that are actually described as neutral tones are warmer than the one that is described as a warm tone they really messed this up. I will say my favorite shade is All Butted Up, like the O2 one. And that's also the shade that I want to apply today. This is definitely the one shade that I feel like has the most pink in it. O2 right here has a lot more pink than O3. O3 on me, it pulls quite golden. And O1, I'm gonna pass that one on. That one is just not showing up on me. O1 is just too light for me. These do have like a scent. It just smells like perfume. I did not really need the scent in this. Like, it's just not the nicest scent. But man, these are so pigmented. So I gotta be very careful when I'm applying these. I have to dip in, okay, and then tap off my brush because these are gonna be very pigmented. And I don't love that necessarily, but I'm also not mad at them. I think They've got a really pretty formula, but they are very, very pigmented. So a little bit of this is going to go such a long way. They also have just a little bit of a sheen to, to them. Not too much. I feel like they are not over the top shiny. You can definitely see the difference, right? I mean, yeah. And I did top off my brush and I went in with quite a light hand. But honestly, I love this shade. I love this shade quite a lot. It's so stunning. It's so pretty. I and mean, you can see definitely a little bit of a sheen, a little bit of a glow, but not over the top. I feel like this is not necessarily a glow that I might, you know, because sometimes I'm not the biggest fan of like glowy bronzes, but this is beautiful. But yeah, so let's actually move on to the blush. And I will say there were so many blushes that got released. I had a hard time making up my mind on which one I would actually want to try out but I think I picked a really good one. So this one is also by Huda Beauty and it's the blush filter liquid blush and this retails for $21. Got this in two shades. She has this in five shades in total. Now I did pick this up in the shade Black Cherry and that one is described as a burnt berry shade and in this shade, Strawberry Cream, which is described as a dusty rose shade. So I've tried these products out multiple times already. And I definitely will say this shade, I think this is going to be a little bit more suitable if you have a deeper complexion, because this is a lot more pigmented than this shade. I'm going to show you some B-roll footage of me actually wearing this. I think it looks very pretty. It's like more on the purple berry sort of side. And I really... I think this is a really nice shade, especially for the winter time. And again, this is a fragrance product, but the scent of this, oh, I love this scent. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna show you what this smells like. I'm gonna show it to you because I actually have it. These blushes smell like this, like these strawberry sweets. I love to munch on them whenever I'm editing. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, it's the exact same scent, the exact same. Oh, so nice. This literally smells like strawberry sweets. I like to put it on my hands first, work it into my brush and then apply it. They are not quite as pigmented as the Rare Beauty ones, but I'm going to tell you right now, I think I prefer this formula. I feel like this formula looks even better than the Rare Beauty ones. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really loving these, especially the shade. That's so good. So I'm going to be applying this. Here is the shade, it's so pretty, and I'm gonna be using my favorite brush for um, cream and liquid products when it comes to blushes, and that is the Ilia Complexion Brush. This has the 
perfect shape. These will stick around until the end of the day. Like, that's why I love them so much as well. And in the beginning, when you apply them, I feel like they look a little bit more vibrant. They need a little bit of time to sink in. But the shade, oh man, it's beautiful. I mean, I definitely do adore this liquid blush formula. It's amazing. I love how buildable it is. I love how natural it's looking. It does look a little bit like light reflective on the cheeks, but it's not over the top dewy. These will definitely dry down. And if you don't like both of the shades that I've got, they've got three other shades. There's also like a peachier shade, like more of a baby pink shade. But this is exactly my type of shade. Strawberry cream it is, and I love the formula. I think they are so amazing. But all right, so my blush is applied, so let's actually move on to a new highlighter. Now I will say this is not necessarily a brand new release. I think this came out a couple of months ago, but I really wanted to give this a try because I've been recently getting into this brand and I really just wanted to try out this highlighter because it looked really pretty. So this is by Iconic London and this is the Lit and Luminous Baked Highlighting Powder and this retails for $33. So this is a baked formula and this is the shade. It only comes in one shade. I really hope they are going to um, add more shades to this because the formula is really pretty. I would say this is more of like a pinky champagne. It pulls pretty icy on my skin and it is quite beaming. <laughs> like I did not think it would be that beaming, but it's quite beaming. So I kind of like to use uh, my Scott Barnes 66 brush. I actually really like this brush. This is a brush that I tend to use so much for highlighters. And I'm just going to go in gently with this because it's quite beaming. But it's beautiful. It's really, really pretty. Like, I really like this one on my nose. This is stunning. I'm going to put it above my lips a little bit. It's quite beaming. But yeah, I really do like this. And I'm just going to take it right here. It's definitely going to give you that lovely sort of like light reflectiveness and I definitely do like it on the tip of my nose. I really do like that. And not every highlighter is going to look nice on the tip of my nose. Sometimes highlighters, they are just too glittery, too sparkly, too shimmery and they just won't give me this effect. But this looks great on the tip of my nose. It's a very pretty highlighter. So that's it for my complexion. So let's move on to my eyes and I cannot wait for this one. I cannot wait to put eyeshadow on my eyes because I recently have received such a beautiful eyeshadow palette uh, and I cannot wait to use it. And of course I'm talking about no other than Cosmic Brushes. They have released two eyeshadow palettes at the same time and of course I did pick up both of them but there's only one that I want to use for today. So today I do want to focus on the Neutrals eyeshadow palette. This retails for $37 and there is also the Cool Trolls eyeshadow palette which also retails for $37. Now Cosmic Brushes is an indie brand from the UK. I feel like they've tried to change their name to Cosmic Beauty, but at the back of the palettes it still says Cosmic Brushes and their website also is still called Cosmic Brushes. So I'm just going to be calling them Cosmic Brushes because I'm just going to forget to call them Cosmic Beauty. <laughs> so this is a brand that I've featured many, many times on my channel. And if you know, you know that I love their Muse palette so much. It's such a pretty palette and I have tried out quite a lot of palettes by them but when I saw that they would release a cool toned neutrals palette and a nude neutrals palette I was like wow I cannot wait to try them out. So this is the Cool Trolls palette. This is the one that I'm not going to be using today just due to the fact that I have already played around with this. I have already filmed a lot of looks and they are going to be up on my YouTube Shorts tab if you're interested. When I saw both of these palettes immediately I thought I would prefer the Cool Toned one because you guys know that I do love a good cool toned palette. So I immediately thought that this would be my favorite out of the two, but I don't think so. I don't think it is. Although I have not played around with this one just yet, the Nude Trolls, 
I do assume just by looking at it that this is going to be my favorite one out of the two. I mean, I'm going to be including them in a future ranking. I only recently just did an eyeshadow palette ranking, but when I filmed that video, I did not have the chance just yet to play around with these. So these are going to be included in an upcoming ranking, okay? But this... Uh, just by looking at it and I have not tried this out yet. So I wanted to do this with you guys today um, I'm of course going to be posting more looks with this palette after this video for sure But I think this is going to be my favorite out of the two and this is so stunning Especially might also be season related I feel like this is more suitable for this time of the year than this Cool Trots palette. This might be really beautiful for like New Year's Eve, winter time, whereas this one, this is kind of screaming summer to me. So let's have a look inside at this beautiful color story. So this palette comes with 12 mattes. It has eight metallics. Two of those are super shifty multi-chromes and one is a vibrant duo chrome. So this color story really does combine some beautiful muted pinky shades, but also a beautiful array of these cozy brown tone shades and then it has like some pops of like mustardy orange some pops of like mauvey shades and also like kind of like a muted grayish green for today I really want to use these mauvey shades like the pinky shades in the palette so I think that's what we are going to be doing today and for the rest of the palette I'm going to be posting shorts with this and I cannot wait to play around with this. I feel like I'm gonna go in with this pinkier shade here, Rumor. This one right here, I'm gonna put that all over my crease. Now this shade almost pulls a little bit warmer than what it looks like in the pan, but it's beautiful. It's almost like a muted peachy pink brown shade. Okay, so now I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna use this shade right here, Chic. I'm going to use that in the inner corner in that portion just to brighten that up a little bit. So up next, I'm going to go into the shade Lust. This one right here and I'm going to apply that onto the outer corners. So just to deepen up the look a little bit. Oh, it's this beautiful aubergine sort of plummy shade. So I'm just going to put it down with this brush and then I'm going to go ahead and blend it out with a fluffier brush. So this one looks a little bit dramatic. I had to lay this one down, blend it out, build it up, blend it out, do a little bit more work, but I think it's okay. But I still want to just put a little bit of a different shade in here. And I was contemplating of maybe using this black called Timeless, but I think I'm gonna go in with Delicate. Like, I'm just gonna use this and literally go in very sparingly with this. And I'm just gonna press it a little bit over the purple. So I'm just gonna be putting in my beloved Make Beauty Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. This is the shade uh, Nebula. I'm gonna use this, it's like a cool tone brown shade. I'm gonna use that in my waterline. So I'm just gonna place the same colors that I did on my upper lid. I'm going to use the shade Rumor and place it on my lower lash line, this one right here. And then I'm gonna deepen it up with the shade Lust and maybe just a little bit on the outer edges, use the shade, what is it called? Delicate, uh, right on the outer corners of my lower lash line. So I'm gonna speed you through that. Okay, you guys, so that's it for the mattes. I am going to be cleaning up my outer edges real quick, apply a glitter primer, and then we can move on to some shimmers. All right, you guys, I feel like there are two shimmer shades that I do wanna use. I wanna use the shade Velvet, this one right here, pretty much all over my lids, and then I wanna go in with the shade Satin. So I'm gonna go in with the shade Velvet now. So I'm gonna take this on my finger first, uh, apply it with the finger and then take a brush to help me blend it out. Ooh, ooh, that is a stunning shade. Let's see how it's gonna look on my eyes. Wow, that is a little bit deeper than I thought it would be. I feel like this almost has like a brown base to it. 
and it also has a little bit of rose gold shimmer well that is deep though and usually i prefer my shimmers to be a little bit lighter okay but this is a very unique shade i don't think i have a shade like this super unique but very deep i did not think we would do such a dramatic look okay i thought this would be a little bit lighter but on my eyelids this is quite a deep shade so i do want to use this shade right here satin quite generously and i'm definitely going to go over the shade with satin because i want to brighten this up So I'm going to use satin also just a little bit on my lower lash line. Okay, so for my inner corner highlighter though, I do want to go in with my highlighter. So I'm just going to use this. But thus far, I will say I really do enjoy the look that I've created for today. And yeah, I cannot wait to try out more. I think it's a beautiful palette. I cannot wait to create more looks. So just keep an eye out on my YouTube shorts tab. So my eye look is done. So let's actually move on to... I would say a newer mascara. I'm not sure if this is a brand new release, but I only discovered this a while ago by a brand that I almost forgot about, but that I used to really, really enjoy. So this one is by Lovina Beauty and it's the Eye of the Desert mascara. And this one retails for $21. Do you guys actually remember Lovina Beauty? I know, it's been a while. I feel like they have not come out with much recently, apart from the skincare, they do fantastic skincare. But in terms of makeup, it was a little bit like stagnant, you know. I feel like they had come out with like three eyeshadow palettes and then they just stopped releasing eyeshadow palettes. Although I did love the very first two eyeshadow palettes that they came out with. I actually did review one of their mascaras back in the day. I don't think they carry that mascara anymore. And I got to show you the outer packaging here because just look at that packaging. That is so stunning when you open this up. I mean, the presentation just so amazing okay this is such a beautiful mascara the only thing that i would say is this has the same sort of shortcoming than their older mascara which is it's very very hard to remove because i tried to remove this with my cleansing milk and i get all of my eye makeup off with that cleansing milk this did not come off so i did use hot water and i tried to remove it like a tubing mascara and it worked a little bit better, but I still had to go in later on with another layer of a cleansing milk. But it kind of came off like a tubing mascara, but it's not marketed as such. So I'm not sure if I'm doing this right or not. If you go to a concert, if you live in a very humid climate, if everything is smudging on you, this is so smudge free to a point where if I would sleep in this, I could still wear this the next day. Like it's kind of crazy. The other thing is that this has a bunch of amazing ingredients in a mascara. So it does so it does say this mascara will so it does say that this mascara will help to protect, nourish, condition, and instantly create a dramatic look. This is an innovative four-in-one antioxidant rich multi-peptide plant stem cell based eyelash growth treatment and mascara one flake or smudge on you. I couldn't agree more. I do love this mascara. I did not think that I would like it as much. And I'm going to show you the brush real quick. It's actually a silicone brush, but it has a little bit of a curve. I'm going to be curling my lashes before I'm going to apply this. And I actually did purchase a new lash curler. My old lash curler almost fell apart. So I got a new lash curler by Rafa. And this is so good. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm going to link it in my description box. It's so fantastic. And this actually does exist in two different sizes. I tried out both because I wasn't sure. And this is the best size, 20 Oh, I think it's 20 regular. They have one that is a little bit smaller, but to be honest, this is the best size for my eyelashes. So I'm just gonna curl the lashes a little bit. And now I'm going to apply this mascara. I will say it's a little bit more of a wet mascara. So you gotta be a little bit careful when you apply it. This is definitely not a dry formula whatsoever, but this coats your lashes so amazingly i'm gonna start like this 
and it will immediately lift your lashes. But just look at that. This has lifted my lashes. It has separated them. It has coated them in enough pigment. So pretty. And this is the opposite of a clumpy mascara. You can literally do a couple of coats and it's not clumpy whatsoever. It looks very, very stunning. So I'm just going to quickly do the other side. So my lower lashes were so easy to coat with this. I think it's also due to the brush. The brush is really lovely. It's very lifting, um, very ultra black, and it just looks fantastic. So I'm really, really happy with this product. And, you know, I'm happy that I got to try out something again by Levina Beauty. I really miss them. I wish they could come out with more makeup, hopefully one day. So let's actually move on to the lip products. And I have one lip product in particular that I want to show you guys. It is one of my all time favorite lip products. I am kind of addicted to this. And, you know, they recently came out with new shades in this lineup. But I also feel like this is still a pretty new product this has not been out on the market last year at least to my knowledge i really do think this is newer so this is the lip velvet by anastasia beverly hills and this retails for 24 dollars you guys may know how much i love a formula like this i really do love these moussey sort of velvety matte lip creams they have recently released four new shades to the lineup out of their old lineup i had two shades and I've been wearing these constantly. They are so pretty. Out of their old lineup, I had the shade Pure Hollywood. And Pure Hollywood is described as a pale mauve nude. I also have the shade Parchment. And Parchment is described as a peachy brown. And then out of the new shades, I came up with four. I did pick up two. So the shade that I picked up is the shade Softy. And Softy is described as a soft pink nude and then the shade that i do want to apply today because this is a dream shade is the shade pale mauve a pale mauvey taupe look at that look at that that is my shade it's so beautiful it's so stunning and i'm going to be applying a lip liner first and this is not a new release but um i'm going to be using my color pop lippy pencil in the shade ashton this is quite a cool tone sort of purpley nude shade it's so pretty and i think it's gonna go really well with pale mauve i've already used pale mauve uh actually i am wearing that in my latest eyeshadow palette ranking on my lips and i can't remember what lip liner i used but i'm just gonna use this today and see if these two shades work together so this lip liner is definitely like a deep ashy sort of ragey purple i'm not sure if i used this lip liner in combination with it i think it's gonna work these are so good, you guys. I cannot wait to show you why I love them so much. And uh, this is just cushiony. It is velvety. It's moussey. And it's just not drying. And that's what I love, love, love about these. And they are also quite diffusing on the lips, you know. They are not line enhancing like these liquid lipsticks from the past. So I'm going to apply the shade Pale Mauve now. It's so beautiful. You'll see what I mean. this is so pretty you guys it looks like powdered lips like this looks so stunning this is exactly the type of like lip shade that i love but it's also the formula that i adore every time i do have multiple shades in a formula it just means that i've tried out one shade and the very first shade that i've tried out was the shade pure hollywood and i love that one so much i was like i want to have more shades in this because this is so stunning. I love it. 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 But all right, you guys, those were all of the products that I've been trying out recently. And I've got to say, I really adore the outcome. The only thing I'm not 100% convinced by was the foundation. This foundation is definitely not my favorite one. I would be really curious to know if you have tried out any of these products yourself or what have you discovered lately that is top notch. Do let me know in the comment section down below and if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to ring the bell in order to get notified about my upcoming videos and I shall be seeing you on here very very soon with the next one so please do take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.